Hey there, so if you sell Santa bags like this in your shop, you might be wanting to figure out a way to make a mock-up for that. Um, so I'm gonna show you something that I was playing around with today. I haven't created official mock-ups with the Santa bags in my shop yet, but I do have these background images in my background scene creator Christmas edition file where you can always grab that and you can make your own backgrounds with that file plus it comes with a bunch of ready-made ones and um, work from there but for purposes of this video I just grabbed a picture of a bag a laundry bag off the internet you would not want to do that you need to have permission um, this is only for this video for when you make your own mock-ups you'll need to get a picture of a bag from um, someone else's mock-up like if I start selling these in my shop or take your own photo or get the manufacturer's permission to use the manufacturer photo and then you'd probably have to cut it out of the background to be able to stick it you know here in your file so I just went ahead and I put it on the file and I slid it around until I found a good spot for it I thought it looked good over here and then I painted in some shadows underneath so it looked a little bit more like it was in the scene as you can see and um, the shadows, I just have different opacities underneath them. And then to create the um, shape that goes on the bag itself, which is your smart object, basically what you wanna do is, now I've already done all this work, so I'm just gonna recreate it up above and make a new layer. You go up and grab your square marquee tool and you draw a rectangle around the bag. Get it kind of close to the bag edges like so and then just fill it with white and so now you have a white rectangle and then you want to right click on this layer and say convert to smart object so now that it's a smart object you can do all kinds of things to it and it won't hurt it <laughs> uh, it won't get skewed out of shape or anything so I'm just turning down the opacity so I can see the bag below and then what you want to do is you want to go up to edit transform warp and this is where the fun stuff happens. So you can drag these little corner and edge spots in to sort of get that rounded bag shape. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're in fact, we're gonna keep the lines outside the edge of the bag the whole time, but um, just get it so you're getting some, kind of the feel of where the fabric would be stretching and pulling, right? So like the bottom corners are coming up a little bit, but stretched down below the top is pulling in where it's all roundy in there and then if you pull over from the right you get this sort of curves in and then back out again kind of like a bell shape you could even pull this part down a little bit and go like that and you can see this line is starting to crook down you'll you'll want to adjust those things as you go along and once you start adding a design into it um, then you can really test to see if your um, shape is going to work out. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to bring that up and play around a little bit here. And it does take some playing and I did take, you know, once I added my design in, I did um, push and pull things out around a little more. But just take your time and don't don't be worried if it suddenly looks really strange or it doesn't turn out the way you want. You can just keep adjusting and tweaking until it looks good. So I would say that's probably good for starters. Maybe this middle would be coming down a little bit. Okay, and we're going to just hit return. All right, and I can put the opacity back up to 100 again if I want. Now since this is a smart object, well, I'm just going to name it smart object so you know which layer we're working on, and I can hit save. That means when I double click it, it will open up in a new tab, and there it is. And this is where we're going to be putting our design. So I made a design here that looks like this, and what I can do is since I've already created that design right in this document, I can just drag it over on top of that tab, but I could also be inside this tab and I could go and find a cut file design that I have and I could copy it and paste it in or drag it in or place it in. There's all kinds of ways to get it in there. But since I have it sitting right here, I'm just gonna grab that folder and drag it over top of that tab and then onto the middle. 
make sure I have my move tool selected and I'm going to stick it right in there. I'm going to make it a little bigger. This can all be played with and adjusted later. Okay, and then I'm going to hit save and we're going to see how it looks back here. So I have to turn that back on and here's how it looks. So you can see it still has a white background. <laughs> and it's not masked into the shape of the bag. So let's make two changes here. For one, let's mask it in so it fits the actual bag shape and doesn't look like a weird smooth bell. So what we want to do is we're going to go down to the layer where the bag is. It's this layer. I'm going to hit Command on my Mac. I think it might be Control on the PC. I'm not sure. But hit Command or whatever key you want <laughs> to try it out and look at your cursor and the little hand has a dotted square box on it. That means you have the right tool. So then we're going to click and now it has selected around that shape. Okay, that's what we want. Now we're going to go back up to the smart object, make sure we're on that layer and it's selected. And you can see, I don't know if you can see in the video, but the smart object here is the white going around the outside, but the actual shape of the bag is where these dotted lines are. Some people call them marching ants. So now we're gonna, now that we have the right layer selected, we have the shape selected, we wanna just click down here in the bottom where you have this square with a hole in the middle of it, and that's your mask tool. You can see as I hover over it, it says add layer mask, just click it. And now it is on the shape of the bag itself. So then the next problem is that it has a white background. So let's go back in here and all we have to do is hide the white background, hit save and go back and there it is on our bag. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So I can see it's running into the tassel right here. So I can go into the smart object and I can scoot it down a little bit. It would also be totally fine to just make the design a little smaller and you can kind of just shuffle it around and hit save again and there you go and then if you think it looks weird in any way and you wanted to adjust the smart object at this point all you have to do is go go into your smart object layer unlink it from the mask click on the left square which is your thumbnail then you go up into edit transform warp again and it brings up your warping stuff so you could really play around here you could be like oh I actually I want the bottom to be look like it's really full and so you drag it up or oh no it should be more squashed down there and the top should be going up or oh maybe I need the edges to stretch out a little bit this this is the part where you can really tweak and play and adjust until you like it and just keep hitting enter as you go along. Don't forget to go back up and lock your mask into place again by just clicking between this this shape that looks like a ghost and, and the thumbnail. I'll just click between and then they are locked. So this is looking pretty good. If I wanted to I could come into the smart object and change colors of things simply by going into each layer and um, I could add a color overlay if I want green there for example and hit save and now it's green or I can go back and say didn't want that and I could turn it off again make it red again and then it's red but so it's looking pretty good right but it still looks a little bright and fakey so what you can do here which I have done down here I often have to um, play around with these settings so I'm just reminding myself what I had so up here in this drop down, you have all of these choices for things you can tweak that will make your image look a little bit different. So I often just try a bunch of things in here, like feel free to just play. But where we ended up having a good result was when we chose multiply. So we're going to go up here and we're going to click multiply. Um, and then I could also turn down the opacity just a little bit because it wouldn't be like super dark in that picture, which is kind of really well lit. It would be a little bit faded out. So do what you can to make it look more real. And then I, for fun, I added another layer on top. I went over and grabbed my gradient tool. I just pressed G on my keyboard and that grabs it. It's right here. And I made sure my radial gradient up here was selected 
which is a circular gradient, and that my um, down here where it has the foreground and background color, I have white and foreground and black in the background, and I also went up into this menu here and made sure the top left corner was picked, which is foreground to background. And then all I did here was I kind of said, oh, it looks like there's more light here on the left side of the bag and it's more of a shadow on the right. So I'm gonna kind of just drag from the left to the right a little bit, make this big shape here. And then again, I just went in here and I was playing around. I was like, how would overlay look? And that looked super crazy and dark and too contrasty. So I went and chose the next thing below and that was soft light and that looks really, really nice. So this is without that effect, this is with that effect. It just adds a little more drama, makes your picture look a little more interesting. But you can also tune it back all the way to zero, all the way to 100. You can kind of play with the opacity in here until you get a look that you like. And so those were the basic steps. And then when we were done, we just ended up with an image that looked like like this. And this is a really great opportunity for you when you have a mock-up like this to convince a customer to buy. Because if they have a kid who has a really long name or they have someone and they want their first and last name and the design you showed them, for example, just said Sarah in great big text, they might be like, that's huge. How's my person's name gonna fit in there? And they ask you to mock it up and you say, sure, I'd be delighted. And then you do this in Photoshop, you just go in there and you edit it and see how it looks and then a pick and then they're like, yes, I want that and they buy and you've made some money. So there you go. Um, I would like to add some of these bag mock-ups to the shop soon. So keep an eye out in the description for when I do that. I will add links and you can always visit my various shops too and check in there for Christmassy designs. But if you're looking for backgrounds to start or you want to try this on your own, like I said earlier, backgrounds just like this one are available in that background scene creator Christmas edition. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and happy summer.